Arthur Nyman is an Israeli citizen based in Jerusalem. He's active in Boycott from Within, a group of Israeli citizens who promote the Palestinian BDS call. He's also active in the One State Foundation, a Palestinian Israeli international initiative for the promotion of a one state solution in Palestine, Israel. And professionally, he is a teacher and a translator. So can I welcome Offa again? Uh, hi, thanks for having me. Can you hear me? Certainly. OK, um, perhaps I could uh, share screen here. Uh, it's optional. I don't have to do that, but I have a Google Doc here um, that we can all sort of go over together. Is that OK? Or uh, so, uh, here's the Google Doc. Uh, might be helpful to go over it together or just, just to listen to what, what I have to say um, up to you. So um, I'm going to say something about Israeli attempts to uh, sabotage our work and how we can respond. Um, perhaps a secondary question is, um, are we making progress uh, or not? Um, so first of all, of course, um, we have to keep in mind Palestinian activists, human rights defenders um, are the ones who are really paying the price. Um, so our colleagues, comrades uh, in various Palestinian human rights NGOs, um, as we know, some of them are abused and uh, detained, especially administrative detention, because Israel cannot actually, doesn't really have a case against them. Um, it's just nonviolent human rights activism. Um, and I think all of us are familiar with um, Israeli attempts to label Palestinian NGOs, in particular six prominent NGOs, as terrorist groups. Um, the recent developments are that the EU um, seems to be skeptical towards these Israeli claims. However, we still have a problem because um, quite a lot of funding has been um, suspended, for example, by the Dutch government. Um, so we have, a, we have some work to do um, to, to keep the, the funds uh, um, flowing. But there is, I mean, perhaps the silver lining here is that Israel hasn't been uh, that successful in its attempts. And some of us believe that Israel has been working so hard on that because it views these uh, human rights defenders who are promoting um, BDS and also uh, uh, engaging the ICC in The Hague as a strategic threat. That Israel doesn't think it has a strong case in the long run um, against our legal uh, claims. That's why uh, it's trying these uh, moves. So Israel is not that successful. Um, perhaps a few words about Israel's efforts against activists across the world. And, and I, I can share the document later, and there are some links here, so everyone can have a look if you're interested. Um, so some background. Um, Israel, Israeli Hasbali is quite sophisticated. They can use different messaging and different tactics uh, depending on specific targets, uh, targets and audience and audiences, target audiences. Um, and the Israeli government uh, is quite skilled at collaborating with local groups uh, around the world. One uh, example is Stand With Us. And the Israeli government can also um, hire professionals, um, including uh, law firms or PR firms, um, to do its bidding, advocacy, litigation, and so on. Um, the work is being done mostly by the ministry, um, quite consistently by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, sporadically by the so-called Ministry of Strategic Affairs, which nowadays focuses mainly on BDS. Uh, however, and you can read that later, um, this ministry and, and one name that comes to mind is Gil Adel Dan, who was the minister under Netanyahu. Um, apparently, they have not been uh, very successful in, in terms of using their budgets. Um, they have been quite aggressive, and of course, some of it sticks and some, some of it works, um, but not everything. One um, key issue is something called concert or Solomon's Sling. You can tell by the name that it's sort of unlike David, King David, that's King Solomon, sort of using 
wisdom and nonviolence to promote uh, Israeli interests. Um, this uh, is a well-funded initiative which seeks to um, reshape the perception of Israel, especially uh, on social media and digital media. Um, they have a lot of funding, but um, so far, again, um, most people who have observed this don't think it's very, very successful. And here you have a link to uh, some material from Haaretz criticizing the project and also uh, uh, asserting that it has not been very successful. But we should all know that Israel is investing a lot of money in this uh, uh, global uh, project to reshape its image. What else? Okay, so um, briefly, uh, perhaps you've also come across the term brand Israel. Branding Israel is a hip, cool uh, democracy. And again, there's some flexibility here. Israel is quite willing to opt for brand Tel Aviv and let go of Israel if the Israeli brand is perceived as too problematic in some context. I mean, just brand Tel Aviv is good enough for them if it works, um, especially uh, in the context of, of pinkwashing, you know, LGBTQ rights and trying to promote uh, an image of Israel as, as sort of the global hub of, of tolerance and acceptance of LGBTQ people, um, which is not quite the case. Um, not, not even, not always in Tel Aviv and certainly not outside uh, Tel Aviv. Um, okay, um, some, I'll just mention this. I mean, various attempts by the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you can read about it later, but one example would be sending um, well-known Israeli figures such as uh, David Grossman, uh, abroad on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with this seemingly uh, nuanced talk of peace and human rights and anti-occupation, but basically the underlying message is quite racist and Rosman is an ultra-Zionist who does not criticize uh, uh, 48. I mean, not really. Um, perhaps the more interesting um, um, issue, and I'm, I'm looking at the clock now, um, the use of brute force, McCarthyism, libel, and slander. So, of course, the IHRA definition plays a major role in, in, in all of this. Um, I'm sure it's, it's on our agenda in so many ways. Um, okay, one thing which is very prominent in the U.S. attempts to promote anti-BDS legislation. Um, most of us think that this is an indication of real Israeli fear because some, you, you might say, yeah, Israel just wants to consolidate its base, and its supporters, and BDS is a very uh, good bogeyman. Um, but if Israel just wants to do that, it can just mobilize people uh, against BDS and social media, uh, publish cartoons and so on. If Israel resorts to uh, um, legislation, we think that, that it really fears um, BDS and BDS progress and the changing discourse in the US, especially uh, within the Democratic Party, especially among young people, um, young Jews in America. Um, again, Israel fears the ICC, the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Um, Israel has attempted to isolate the BDS movement. Um, we don't think they have really been successful uh, at that. There is a current attempt by the Anti-Defamation League, the ADL in the United States to isolate Jewish Voice for Peace uh, and other groups as anti-Semites or groups who are supporting anti-Semitism. Um, we don't think they're gonna get away with it. JVP by now is well established in the US. Um, probably an indication of some uh, uh, despair uh, um, in the ADL circles. Um, just briefly, you can read about it later. Stand with us, already mentioned. The Creative Community for Peace, um, basically a front for Stand with us, trying to uh, sort of uh, introduce various uh, artists who are uh, pro-peace and therefore anti-boycott because boycott is against bridges and so on, uh, all this rubbish, you can read about it later. Um, briefly, um, targeting Israeli dissidents here in Israel. So obviously most of the opposition to apartheid here is coming from Palestinian citizens of Israel. And what we are seeing, um, especially recently, is um, attempts by right-wing Knesset members 
to silence um, flag, Palestinian flag protests at two Israeli universities, especially on Nakba Day. Uh, we've had uh, some impressive rallies uh, uh, inside universities last month during Nakba Day with lots of Palestinian flags. And this is driving uh, um, some mainstream and uh, right-wing uh, Israelis nuts. Um, we've also seen some threats uh, um, by prominent figures. One name uh, that comes to mind is uh, for, former minister Israel Katz, actually threatening the Palestinians with a second Nakba due to these Nakba Day uh, uh, rallies with the flag. So the Palestinian flag is a hot issue right now, and um, I can send more uh, information about that to anyone who's interested. Um, another thing, the boycott law, the boycott law in Israel, which makes it possible to sue uh, uh, for damages, people who call for, the, for, for a boycott of Israel. In its current form, uh, the burden of proof is quite high. Uh, they have to prove that artists, for example, canceled directly because of our appeal. Um, and uh, as far as I know, we only have one example uh, uh, of this, uh, of a ruling based on the law against two citizens of New Zealand who uh, um, convinced a, a prominent singer from New Zealand to cancel her performances in Israel. And it, the courts cannot really enforce it, enforce, enforce it in this case, the ruling, because they are in New Zealand. Um, trying to humiliate human rights NGOs. For example, Israeli human rights NGOs, in every uh, uh, bulletin that they send out, they have to write something that like, we receive foreign government funding. Okay, so sort of humiliating them. Um, personally, if you wanna ask me about my own experiences, you can ask later, but just uh, very, very briefly. Yeah, of course, there's a lot of personal harassment. It varies from one person to another. Um, some people have suffered uh, much more than I have, but you may be targeted on social media, um, denial of work to some people, some actors, prominent artists. Um, you might have some more questions about that, but there's a link here.